Hey all, it's Aurelius. In this video, I'm going to teach you three ways on how you can protect your digital downloads such as PDF documents, media files, or anything else that can be digitally downloaded. Each of these ways has its pros and cons and flaws, so there's no one solution or method that does it all. So if you do add maybe two of these methods or perhaps even three of these methods, then it's even better. Let's get on to method number one, which is using a PDF protection tool such as PDF2Go. So go to pdf2go.com and then where you go is to the protect PDF option. So if you go to all tools, there's an option to click on protect PDF. From here, you simply drag and drop your file right here. So this option is for PDF documents specifically. So let's say I've got this ebook right here that I want to protect or password protect specifically. That'll upload it as you can see. And then while we wait for that, we can just choose the password that we want. So this password will be used to unlock this PDF. So let's just put in password for this example. You're also given a few other options such as prevent printing, copying or modifying. So we can select all of that. And then there's a specific password if they wish to print, copy or modify. So we enter a password again. A handy option that PDF2Go also offers is this rasterize option. Essentially what it means is if you have this PDF document, people can really just copy and paste the text and the images onto let's say a Word doc or Google doc. So in order to stop and prevent that from happening, enable rasterize, which will then convert those pages into basically pixels or images rather than text that they can copy and paste. So enable that. I think that's a great measure if you don't want your ebook, let's say copied and pasted. Once you're set with all that, click on start. Once you've hit that start button, it'll then do its job of basically password protecting the PDF document. Once that's all done, click on download. And here's the downloaded PDF file. If I try to open that, it'll ask me for the password. So you can see right here, it's asking me what the password is for this document. So I'll enter the password in. And as you can see, now it is unlocked. A little warning and a caveat here, by using this method, people who do have the password can easily unlock it and decrypt it. All they need to do is go and use one of these tools like PDF2Go and then go to unlock PDF. Basically, all, you, all they need to do is just drag and drop that exact password protected file and then putting or inputting that password that they know of and then that'll do basically unlock that file completely. So then there'll be no prompt for a password for that particular PDF. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose of protecting a PDF with a password. But if they do go through those links and if they desperately want to unlock it in a way where there's no more password protection and then they illegally share it amongst their people, then you know, then you really can't stop it. But again, they do need to know that this method or tool exists in order to unlock the PDF document. Now, with that said, there is another method. So I'll share with you method number two, and that is to use a, another service called docsend.com. Docsend allows you to send any kind of document to your students, your email recipients, or your customers with a specific unique link. And then you can actually track who has downloaded or access that particular link. Here's what the backend looks like. If I go to content, I can then create a new link or I can just upload a new file. Let's use this ebook again as an example, but you can upload pretty much anything on Docsend. But before I jump into Docsend, I wanna note that Docsend is a paid tool, which is $10 per month, paid annually. There is a free trial if you do wanna give it a try for 14 days. So if you do wanna protect your files and it is essential, then this may be a good solution for that. With that said, let's now protect one of our documents. Let's go back and then upload this particular file. So I'll click on upload content. Docsend also allows you to upload signable documents at a URL or upload and extract zip, but I'll choose upload files and folders from my device. I'll drag and drop that specific PDF document right here, and then I'll click on upload. Now that it's uploaded, you can see that it is processing. And once it's processed, what you can do is add a new link. So there's a specific link that students or customers or email recipients can use in order to access that specific file. I'll click on add link. Now I'm going to create a new account for this. So let's say it is uh, for my customers 
or it is for the marketing team or whatever it is, you can just name it right here to describe the organization or uh, company perhaps. In here, I wanna put in staff. So I'll just create a new account named staff. And then do I require email to view? I can check that or uncheck it. So it's up to you whether they need to enter a valid email address or not. You can also allow downloading or not. And there's an expiry date too. So if you have a specific date when this specific document needs to be downloaded by, you can set that. Also offers password protection and access control. You can allow certain viewers with uh, specific email addresses with that. And even going a step deeper with viewers must verify their identity via a secure link sent to their email prior to accessing your document. In addition, you can add a watermark if you wish to do so. But once you're done with the settings, click on create a link. Now I'm given the unique link, I'll just copy that. Now when I try to open the document in a new browser with that link, I am prompted to enter my email address. Docsend allows you to track who has downloaded and visited the link you can see right here. So if they do enter their email, we've got a record of all of that. As an example, I entered my email address to access that PDF file and now I can see under activity visitors, I can see last seen uh, at this time and uh, total time spent and number of visits. What's also great about Docsend is that it integrates with Zapier. Zapier allows you to do all sorts of things, integrating as a, a kind of a middleman tool to connect with a, another app or tool. This can be a powerful combination because once you integrate Docsend with, let's say your shopping cart system, any customers that purchase through your shopping cart, that information and that data can then be passed on through Zapier, then to Docsend, which then can be used to validate whether a customer really did purchase or not. The third way to protect your downloads is to gate it with some sort of membership plugin, script, or system. One in particular I can mention is Wishlist Member, which is a highly popular membership plugin. It plugs into WordPress, which is the most popular uh, blogging platform out there. It offers one-click content protection, so you can create uh, certain pages and then protect it with uh, the right membership level. So if they don't have a certain membership level or if they didn't purchase, then they won't get access to that specific download. So this method may be a little extreme, especially if you basically wanna offer the digital download right away after someone purchases. But if you do wanna take that extra measure, and protection, I guess you can use a membership plugin like Wishlist Member. If you really wanna protect your digital downloads, you can gate it with a membership plugin in combination with something like Docsend to then protect and create unique links for your digital downloads. And by using a membership plugin, you can see who has logged in, who has access specific pages, and then restrict access if you do see or find someone that is a little suspicious. And there you have it. Those are three ways and methods on how you can protect your digital downloads. If you found this video helpful, by all means, hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications too, so you don't miss out on future tutorials just like this. Thanks so much for watching and looking forward to sharing the next video with you.